Jesus asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said back to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Early Christianity spread from the Eastern Mediterranean throughout the Roman Empire and beyond, perhaps reaching as far east as India. Originally, this progression was closely connected to already established Jewish centers in the Holy Land and Jewish diaspora. The first followers of Christianity were Jews, commonly referred to as Jewish Christians or God-fearers. The Apostolic Seas was founded by the Apostles of Jesus, who left Jerusalem sometime after the crucifixion of Christ, circa 26 to 36 AD, following the Great Commission. We read in the Bible about the Great Commission as it says, And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The teachings of the early church were in direct opposition to the teachings of the Roman Empire. At this time, the Roman emperor was seen as a deity, one of many gods and a supreme authority on earth. The Christian teaching that there is only one God with whom Jesus is equal undermined the power of the emperor and thus the empire itself. To insult the emperor's authority or divinity of Rome was a crime punishable by a gruesome death. Therefore, early Christians gathered in small private homes known as house churches. Many of these early Christians were merchants and others who had practical reasons for traveling to northern Africa, Asia Minor, Arabia, Greece, and other places. While they traveled, they continued to practice their faith and covertly spread the teachings of Christ. Over 40 Christian communities were established by the year 100, many in Anatolia, also known as Asia Minor. In Asia Minor was the region of what is now known as Lebanon. To hide from persecution, the Lebanese Christians hid in the mountains where the Romans would not risk endangering their armed forces. While residing in the mountains, one learned man, Marun, or Marin, reflected on the teachings of Jesus and retreated to an ascetic life of a hermit to fully appreciate the truly awe-inspiring life of Christ. His isolation served to be a curiosity for those nearest to him and so eventually he began to teach them about the life of Jesus. Those who followed in his house church, or in Arabic, Bait Marun, were called Murani, or Maronites. By the end of the first century, Christianity had already spread to Rome, India, and major cities in Armenia, Greece, and Syria serving as the foundations for an expansive spread of Christianity eventually throughout the whole world. By the year 250 AD, the teachings of Jesus had reached a woman named Helen who began to profess the Christian faith. She bore a son who would become a great Roman emperor named Constantine. During Constantine's reign, he went to battle with the Carthaginian warrior Maxentius, who was a formidable adversary. Constantine worried about his impending battle and approached his mother for counsel. She prayed fervently for her son's safety and the victory of Rome. Her prayers were answered with a dream where she saw her son conquering his enemy and engraven on his shield was the face of Christ. Taking this as a sign from God, Helen urged her son to go into battle 
with the Christian symbol of a cross on his banners. Constantine took his mother's advice, and because his enemy was Greek, used the Greek letters Chi and Rho, the first two letters of the word Christ, intertwined and boldly placed on his military banners to endorse his fight in the name of Christ. He was victorious, and his military success eventually led to his conversion to Christianity. Constantine's embrace of the Christian faith allowed Christians everywhere in the Roman Empire to celebrate their faith openly without the risk of persecution. The church houses now sought to band together to ensure their strength and to bring uniformity to their worship. Five major regions were identified as Christian strongholds. Collectively, they were known as the Pentarchy and included Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria, Antioch, and Jerusalem. Each of the five regions had a see, or a leader, who could facilitate the teachings of Christ. The communities came together at the First Council of Nicaea to share their thoughts and ideas and to solidify the Christian beliefs and understanding. It was decided that Jerusalem would be the center of the Christian world and the other four sees deferred to the leader of the land where Jesus walked. In the mid-600s, as Islam took a foothold in the Middle East, Muhammad led the Muslim people to conquer the nations where they resided. The Muslim conquests, as they were called, destroyed the Pentarchy and conquered Jerusalem, then Alexandria, and lastly Antioch. However, the mountains of Lebanon became inaccessible to Muhammad's armies, and the Lebanese Christians, the Maronites, survived the Muslim invasion of Antioch. Again, the mountains provided escape from persecution, and the Lebanese people began to acquire an affinity for the mountains, the mountains that are often covered with ancient cedar trees, the mountains that radiate the majesty of God, the mountains that are the protection, strength, and God's gift to the Maronite people. With three of the five Pentarchy regions destroyed, and Constantinople's separation from the Pentarchy due to fundamental differences, Rome remained the last standing region of the original Christian domains. As a consequence, Rome then became the center of Christianity, and the Maronites, as well as several other house churches, bonded close to the leadership of Rome, eventually becoming the universal Catholic Church we know today.